Hello, I'm here today with a man who has become synonymous with the great tradition of design at the festival, a person who helped establish that tradition with his early work with Tanya Mozeyevich, Desmond Healy. Now this year, you're doing The Importance of Being Earnest with Brian Bedford. What do you have? I can't wait to open your chocolate <laughs> box. <laughs> um, but it's a gorgeous play to do, number one. It's a dangerous play because everyone knows it. Everyone knows it. Um, there's a danger of over-designing or designing the performance or, you know, it's a difficult thing to, to hold back and just do it. So you, um, you, you so build figures first of all, these little creatures, that's the most important thing to begin with, that's human size. Right. And I do everything around that figure, everything, you know, and then, with measuring sure, but and finally, if this doesn't work in the shape, then we start again. The picture should only complete when that's there, you know? Your designs over time are given it, the freedom that you sculpt as much by the void as you do by the shape. Yes, yeah. It's fantastic because but, there's something very depressing about a standard set. Yeah. It's like a kitchen or a bathroom at a yeah. home show. Yeah. yeah it's all Yes, done. exactly, yeah. <laughs> the mystery, that's the word. Right. Mystery, yes, yes. mystery. Mystery is a very good word. Or to beguile an audience too. When it's appropriate. And to charm them. Yep. And to when help it's appropriate. Them. When it's appropriate. To allow them and their yeah. imagination to fill in. Yeah. yeah. Because the other thing, Anthony, I, I, unlike lots of my colleagues, I don't like the audience coming close. You paid your money, stay down there. You, you know, you don't know what it's made of, you know. Okay, now I want to ask you, okay, we've got you on camera, and you're not going to, you can tell me to shut off and not answer, but I know that your sets are made of the most magical <laughs> things, and well, uh, do you, like, do you, do you give those, um, would you share with an audience the kind of things you're oh, using to sculpt sure. that set? Yeah. Well, speed, speed is of the essence, again, 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 and um, I, th I think a good artist can work with anything put in front of him, you know. That's why being part sculptor, part painter, right. part cook is awfully good, you know. Because and the more you know up here, the more easy it is to fool people that they're seeing something. And quite often it came from having to make do. What was available? Paper, paste the ever-loving masking tape. And, um, and was scotch tape? Scotch tape. So Desmond, importance being earnest, yeah. uh, a, a convention yeah, of some yeah. sort, and pool noodles. Pool noodles. So, masking tape. What have you created for us? Show and us your, uh, show us the matter. So Act One in London, beginning Bray, London. Okay. Or, well, Half Moon Street. So that um, we tease the audience to thinking they're seeing a black and white production. But Act Two comes the garden, comes a little higher. Act Three is a little higher. When the roses are there, the green grass is, you know, green carpet of grass. And Act Three is a little more lush right. on account of the house in Herefordshire. Yeah, so this is the beautiful um, apartment at the but beginning the, for the, the young bachelor. Of, yes. Oscar Wilde says the, the, the apartment is artistically appointed and furnished, which means he, the Chinese vases, the musical instruments, um, the antique portraits, the blue and white china, all those that I made reference to, the Indian table. Uh, and then we go back to the garden. The over area. in the country. Yeah. Like these are two units by themselves will be on pastures. The scene changes won't be like this, I promise you. <coughs> <laughs> but you see, again, which is interesting, Anthony. Because there's so much in the grid, we can only fly six inches. So in order to make it look deeper, these are separate. I see. Which I see. So you get it's just more old, perspective. It's another old 19th century trick. You know, to and the, uh, the rostrum plays throughout. Okay. So then Elevated area at the back. Yeah, and this this uh, beautiful garden. Uh, this, uh, the house is so. Uh, no.
they're wonderful things, these are like dolls' houses. Yeah. They're better than reality. Well, my, my, my young friends love them. So but just yeah. from a few pieces, Desmond, that creates a yeah. beautiful, uh, magic reality. I think it's fun when you, you see, it, it, like I said earlier, it only gets complete when these people go there, you know. And the costumes, Desmond, against that, I mean, yeah. do they have more color or are, you, are they it rose? Gradually, gradually. Magic. It's formal, it's serious, serious comedy. It's serious stuff about trivial nonsense. And, um, and somehow, the more seriously you treat it, the, the funnier it gets, I think. Thank you very much. My this pleasure. is wonderful. My pleasure. Thank you. Welcome back to the Festival Theatre. I'm Anthony Cimolino. I have the pleasure to be here tonight with Brian Bedford. And Brian, uh, that looks wonderful. It looks yeah. beautiful. Well, it's uh, the play could have been written for Desmond to design. Right? <laughs> no, but it's, yeah. it's his. This is his yeah. period. This is his kind of play. Now, Brian, we have some questions from our viewers. Right. So I want to start, and we'll start with one from from them. Brian, you are the master of the raised eyebrow, this person wrote, and other small gestures. How do you perform these close-up movie tricks on the festival stage? Gosh, that, that's not how I see myself at all, uh, being master of the small gestures, uh, or the r raised eyebrow. Um, I, <laughs> Anthony, really? I, I just... <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't organize these things, um, uh, and I approach every kind of part. And I've been blessed in that I've played all kinds of different parts in all kind of different styles. And I, uh, you, you know, fast farces, tragedies, you name it. And I, uh, I approach everything in exactly the same way. And I think. I approach things in a very serious way. Yes. I, I do I do believe I, I love I love playing comedy and I've played a lot of comedy, but I've also played a lot of the other side of, of, of the mask too. Uh, but I do uh, was it George M. Cohan who said uh, the comedy is a very serious business, but I think it's true. Well, and of course, the description that Oscar Wilde gave to the importance of being earnest is a trivial comedy for serious people or a serious comedy for trivial people. Yes. Um, yes. He, he, he changed it around. Right. And, and eventually it was called uh, a trivial comedy for serious people. people. And, I think, and, and he also called it a farcical comedy. And I think they're both pretty good descriptions. Right. 